Where do you put the bullets in this thing? In a world where every movie franchise has to have 20 sequels, we finally have a story that treats you like an adult and doesn't spoon feed you exposition. <laughs> King Arthur, here we go. From the mind and pen of Guy Ritchie, we have King Arthur. In case you need a refresher, Lock, Stock, Two Smoking Barrels, Snatch, and not to be outdone, Sherlock Holmes. Guy Ritchie brings us the very classic tale that up to this point, I had only seen from Disney. Disney, sword in the stone, pulls a sword. Now in case you were never a child and need a refresher, or for some reason never heard the tale of King Arthur, basically there's a sword in a stone. Whoever pulls the sword from the stone is the rightful heir to the kingdom. They are now the king. Now sword in the stone that Disney did, that's the King Arthur, like I said, I was familiar with. That was the entire story getting Arthur to the stone so he could pull the sword and he could be named king. That was it. In this movie, the unrightful king who was played by Ju Law is sure as hell not going to give up his power without a fight. And that's where this movie's going. There you go. All caught up. A lot of this movie was very fast paced. If you remember Sherlock Holmes, there were a lot of scenes where there would be some exposition of how Sherlock Holmes found a clue or solved a crime. And it was a, it was a series of quick flashbacks. It would flash, Holmes would be doing something, flash, he'd be doing something else. So they crammed about 20 minutes of exposition into like a 20 second little nugget. This movie did that several times and it really made the pacing quick. The information in this movie and the exposition that's folded in comes at you pretty damn fast. And if you're not paying attention, you're probably going to miss some details. But you know what? I liked that. I liked not having every little thing laid out. The focus wasn't on every minute little detail. The focus was on the big picture, which was the story, i.e. Arthur versus Uncle. <laughs> I want to quickly talk about the cast. Arthur is played by Chris Hunnaman. 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 H-U-N-N-A-M. Hunnam, Chris Hunnam, who as I've heard is kind of a big deal in Sons of Anarchy, but I've never watched that show. It's not really my thing. So I came into this movie a complete Chris Hunnam virgin. And I came into this movie a complete blank slate with Chris Hunnam. I will say this, and this isn't spoiling anything. If you watch the trailer, there's this scene where Chris Hunnam's, he's getting all revved up. I'll put a photo of it here so you know what I'm talking about. When I was watching that, the first thing I thought was, that Conor McGregor? Seriously, you strip off the tattoos and that's Conor McGregor. Chris Hunnam as Arthur, he was good. He was functional. He, I felt like Chris Hunnam as, there's nothing I can, I can think back to in my brain that I go, no one else could play Arthur but, but him. It, he just kind of hung out at like a level seven. If this is Conor McGregor playing King Arthur and this is Andy Dick playing King Arthur, he was way above here, but he was kind of just there. He was just kind of, and that just could be because I don't know who he is and I'm not really a fan of his, so therefore I have no real opinion. But nothing really stood out uh, for me. I think if there are more of these movies or as I see him more, I'll probably like him more. But for this, he was functional. Now, now I want to move on to somebody who, 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 Jude Law. Jude, I love Jude Law. Jude Law, you're amazing. Jude Law is an actor's actor. I mean, as a, if you're watching, a, if, you, if you go to a movie, when I go to a movie, when you go to a movie, when you see the villain, you, he should, they should be so vile and make you feel so uneasy that just seeing them on the screen just gives you, makes you squirm and you feel disdain and, and he, he heaps this upon you over and over and over. You want to hate a villain, if you, ugh. Jude Law. Jay Law says more with his eyes in this movie than Chris Hunnam says in his entire performance as Arthur. Now that's not a knock to Chris Hunnam as Arthur, that's just the testament to how great Jude Law is. So Jude Law is awesome in this. Quick note, because I'm gonna gloss over this, there are a lot of characters I'm not gonna mention. There's the mage, she was pretty cool. There's a lot of King Arthur's buddies. <laughs> they were cool too. And uh, there were a, a lot of Eric Bana was in this movie. So there's a lot of people I'm not mentioning just because I will say though, Eric Bana's opening battle scene was pretty badass. Okay. Now to speak objectively for everything that I liked in this movie, and there were a lot, there was a lot that I liked in this movie. A lot of those good things kind of act as a crutch for some of the things that aren't so great. The main thing that wasn't all that great was the pacing of the film. Story was great. Pacing, not so much. I saw this movie twice not because it was so amazing i had to see it twice that i've been awake like 18 hours i went to see this movie at like 10 30 at night and I, I straight up 
right towards the third act, I just, <clears throat> just zonked out. I, I woke up as the final, I don't want to ruin anything, so as the end of the movie was happening, which was pretty awesome, but I had no context of what the heck just happened, so it wasn't fair to try to review it without going and seeing it again. So I went the next day to a matinee, and what I found was I went in fresh, full night's sleep, and as it was going towards the end of the second act, into the third act, I started kind of... Okay, I was kind of nodding off a little bit. So there's some something with pacing there where the movie has this really quick, fast pace early on and in many parts of it. It kind of grinds down a little bit. It does pick back up towards, uh, you know, as the third act kicks in, but just something to keep in mind. For all the stuff that's good, the pacing suffers a little bit. Nothing that was a complete deal breaker, but it does happen. I do have to point this out. I try to keep my reviews pretty just, did I have fun? And I don't get too far into what were the writers thinking when they wrote? I don't get too much into that because I'm not a writer. I don't have any place to talk. But there was a section, it's towards the end of the first act leading into the second that I felt like they took the second Lord of the Rings movie, The Two Towers, and they crushed it. If they took that movie and crushed it into about five minutes. There you go. I think a lot of stuff happened. It was probably another good 45 minutes that they just didn't have time for and they had to chop it up and just the big shining star the saving grace to this movie which i am really excited to be able to mention was the story there was a really good solid story which i miss in a lot of movies i'm watching these days there were so many great moments there were a lot of great twists that i didn't see coming there were kick-ass battle scenes, some really cool action scenes. And just around everything out, there is some meaty knife-in-the-heart tragedy hmm, to this movie too. But in the current movie-going cinephiles era of every movie seeming like it's going to be another trilogy or another shared universe or another just, we have to make sure this movie does 20 sequels, this movie felt complete in and of itself. It felt like they went in saying, let's make a complete film, and they are obviously leaving this open to do more with King Arthur. But I felt in and of itself, it was a complete story with good acting, well worth seeing. King Arthur, fun summer movie. As I say on every one of these reviews, I will eventually lock down my rating system. I don't really have one, so just to keep it simple, I'd give this a good, you know, seven out of 10. Good, it was fine. Go to see it at a matinee, you'll enjoy it. But that, that's about where I'll leave it. It's, it's a good, it's, it's a good first run at King Arthur. Great, amazing, will I see it again? No, but was it good, was it fun? Yes. At the end of the day, this was kind of getting the feet in the water to see if people wanted to see another fantasy film again, and I think they do. I think we're ready for it, more fantasy. Okay, King Arthur, did you see it? Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? If you don't, that's fine. If you do, that's fine. Either way, I'd love to see your comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. While you're at it, why don't you tell me your favorite fantasy movie? But it can't be from the Lord of the Rings. You can't say Lord of the Rings part two or through Return of the King. Can't use any of those, it's cheating. They're great, Hobbit either, can't use it. I will tell you my favorite, Willow. Never did not like that movie. If you like this review and you haven't done it yet, hit subscribe, that'd be really cool. But if not, that's fine too. I still hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, bye-bye.